Welcome, and we can start talking about things. Our biggest development this week uh, is that we've started to get out a bunch of the project viewers that we've had in the works for a while. These are things that are kind of first looks at various uh, various new features. Um, and uh, as usual, very helpful to get any feedback from people on those. I think the ones that went out this week are uh, the Mesh Optimizer project. This is a method for making improved LODs during a Mesh upload. There's the Performance Floater project, which creates a new floater that uh, is intended to make it easier to tweak your performance. There's a bunch of performance-related graphic settings, plus a frame rate indicator and other goodies all uh, kind of collected in one place. Um, so that's supposed to uh, make things a bit simpler for people there. Um, uh, thanks, Beck. I appreciate the feedback. Um, if you have any specific suggestions, I'd be happy to see it. Um, Let's see, uh, the 360 Capture is a project viewer for capturing uh, panoramic views. Um, we've had a very old version of this floating around for a couple of years now. This is all updated and better in his new UI. Uh, if you happen to be running the two-year-old one, um, then it should automatically get updated to the new one, but if not, you can always just go grab it manually. Um, and uh, again, any details on that would be good. Um, let's see, there are two other project viewers out now. Copy-paste viewer uh, is has a uh, build in QA now, so there should be an updated project viewer for that coming out fairly soon. And Legacy Profiles is probably not going to get updated very soon because the work we have there is kind of pending on back-end changes. Um, let's see. So that is what we've got so far. Um, and let's see. We're also trying to speed up the pace of getting viewer changes out in general. We've too many separate viewer projects going. Um, we're going to be trying to fit more into each mate, and probably the two mates that we have now as separate RCs are going to get rid of a single RC. Uh, let's see. I think that's probably it for new viewer stuff. Um, for this week, and who else do we have here? Anybody? Uh, Ryder, anything new to say on the kind of server side of things? Uh, no, nothing. Nothing big coming down the pipe right now. We don't really know anything about time frame for the legacy profile support stuff, do we? Uh, I am not even going to. I am not even going to guess when. Yeah. Into the queue. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, I guess that's uh, that's probably it then. We're open for open for questions. Uh, I just wanted to bring up um, this Jira, and I'm wondering if that's been looked at. Uh, the reason I bring that up is because our new users uh, actually it came up at a, a community gateway uh, group. Um, and uh, we still have new residents all the time coming into Second Life for the first time with open mics, and they have no idea that they're broadcasting everything that they say. As far as I know, all other third party viewers have that talk. Uh, it's, it's not a toggle, it's a press to talk by default. So you're only talking when you're explicitly holding down. Right. Uh, of the, course, there's the option to switch it button. to toggle. But by default, I think it's toggled. And um, so new residents, of course, they're brand new. They're clicking on things, and then they're 
talking away to their mom or whoever. Uh, yeah, I'm just taking a look at the... Okay, yeah, it looks like this is has been accepted and is currently in an upcoming mate, but it's not one of the ones that's already at an RC. Wonderful. Um, so, yeah, I, I don't know the time frame, but that oh, but just should knowing that be you've, that's, turning up at yeah, some point. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, I don't know what's more intuitive for that kind of a feature. I mean, people who are used to Zoom calls, I mean, it's normal to, you know, or I, I think when people come in as well, they kind of have a may not even that. know that there's, you know, voice capability. Mm. Yeah, that's true. I guess for first-time users, they're... Yeah, they have no idea. Opted and into like I say, like there. we run a, a really busy community gateway. Um, we have Prelude. And so we have uh, new residents coming in all the time, and it is very common. They're also difficult to um, try to tell them that their mic is open because, <laughs> funny enough, they don't tend to respond, even though we can tell that they're there. We can hear them breathing. So they have their mic on, but they're not actually listening. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, no, it makes sense. Uh, there's enough people uh, doing that sort of thing on purpose without trying to encourage anybody to That's do it by right. mistake. right, yeah. I actually brought this issue up with Oz yonks ago, um, and um, I just assumed it had already been fixed, but uh, Torek brought it up at the um, Gateway group, and I didn't realize it was still a thing. Yeah, well, I guess that kind of ties into what I mentioned, which is that we've got uh, a lot of changes kind of piling up and too many viewers in the queue. So uh, we're uh, going to try to get some of that stuff out as uh, expeditiously as we can. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Reduce the resolution of the screen buffers. I'm not sure if I understand what that's doing. What what's the uh, what's the functionality there and the intent? I mean, does that mean you're actually rendering at the lower size and then just kind of blowing up the result, or...? Okay. Oh, that's interesting. I have something to run by you. Just wait till we're off this topic. Uh, okay, yeah, the, uh, I, mean, I mean, that sounds like an interesting option if, uh, uh, if we, uh, had a had a contribution for that. We'd be interested to take a look at it. Um, 
A uh, question about how soon the performance floater is going to be a done deal. I mean, we don't have any particular time frame. We, we just got it out for initial testing now. We've certainly got a lot of other things in the queue, so um, the reason that that's going to get out instantly. I know that uh, obviously we've had discussions about whether we should be updating the rendering cost uh, calculations first before that actually gets promoted. Um, I think there are arguments in favor of that approach, and if we decide to do that, then it would be even longer. But, I mean, you've got time to get us feedback, and certainly not guaranteed to go out in its current form, but uh, the sooner we hear, the better. Uh, okay, uh, so other than that, I guess we're, uh, we're open for uh, for your question. Um, okay. I've got a dev who is inspired to do something like this and i just if you could just watch the video and then use the source filmmaker normally a film director yells loud So this is for machinima types of things? That's right, yeah. Oh, sorry, I gave you a timestamp link. I didn't mean to do that. Um, yeah, so uh, from what I understand, and Beck actually will understand this better than me, but uh, I believe it, it sort of copies everything uh, from cache, essentially, and then you can um, convert them into assets, not necessarily not in world like it's not copy copy bot but there is the issue of uh, DMCA um, seeing as that it is essentially simulating I don't know Beck can you explain it better than me <laughs> yeah, it's not back. So you're replaying the scene with various kinds of uh, you can poses manipulate and positions and that's right. You can manipulate it after mm. afterwards. So the, the really the main concern is uh, IP rights and whether that would be a, a considered a violation. Yeah, OK. Um, yeah, uh, I don't mean, expect an answer right this moment, but something maybe you guys could think about and get back to me. Uh, OK, yeah, I need to understand what the scope of it is. And obviously, the, the IP concerns are going to be around. Um, I think it's going to be primarily around, uh, you know, actually exporting content rather than just, uh, you know, producing. That's producing. right. And and, and but, for the record, like we haven't so, begun development or even committed to doing this. Um, he just expressed interest in doing it. Yeah. Yeah, okay. I don't understand Beck either how it will work with SL. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well. Um, yeah. I mean, if we have a. a kind of a more specific proposal for what we're talking about in SL, it would be it would be easier to get an answer about that. Um but uh yeah obviously I'd have to to uh talk with legal about anything that was substantially different than what we're doing today. Anything I would say about it is just kind of speculative. Yeah, I'm not sure what you mean by storing the content. Um, you know, there's obviously you've got local caches in the viewer already, but it's a question of how, I guess, you know, whether it's being sort of stored persistently in, in an exportable form and that sort of thing. Yeah, I'm not convinced it's even doable. But um, I, I, I told him that I would uh, try to get a, 
a yay or nay on the IP issue. Yeah. Okay. I, I I think we would have to have a more detailed description of exactly what it entails, and then we'd have to run it by leak. Okay. I'll I'll ask him to do it. that and uh, send you the email. Yeah. Okay. Sounds good. Uh, let's see, bug 215951, uh, let's see, created in 2018, currently closed, uh, let's see, I don't, I'm, not, yeah, I'm not sure what the history of the discussion was on this. Um, Disable default texture filtering and switch to nearest neighbor. So this would affect sort of all texture tab. So this so this this is being set on a per object basis or a per face basis, or or is it being set as like a global property uh, for the for the whole uh, whole scene per face? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I I see it's currently closed, but I don't know the the history. It's been a while. Uh, tell me thoughts on this. What uh, I mean, any difficult. ideas on how I mean, useful or hard it would be? I don't think it's that difficult. I mean, all we're doing is changing from bilinear sampling to nearest neighbor sampling, so uh, it doesn't look that complicated for our first guess. And yeah, I can definitely see the appeal for pixel art stuff. So, yeah, like I said. Uh, there's a certain pixel art style you actually do want those harsh edges. You don't want everything bilinear filtered to hell, so to speak, or everything looks kind of smoothed out, kind of which loses the detail. But, yeah, I think the biggest issue today would be that we would have to add a new field to each face in the prim, and we don't we don't currently have, really have any easy way to sort of extend the per object data. It's it's one of the things that we're talking about. It would it would help a lot of things if it was easier to expand existing databases or or you know tables or whatever but um i'm pretty sure that would be the the scariest part of trying to tackle this now is it hard to find a place to kind of fields yeah the server backend is really the, the question here yeah if the materials block is sufficiently multi-purpose we might be able to just add add it there um we should probably also discuss this too when we do pbr because pbr will kind of need a, a similar solution on a per object and potentially even on a per face basis although in that case i'd rather have a per object basis but but yeah we should probably talk about flags and what's involved in the server side all right. So, uh, backing up, Coffee, you said that uh, this is of interest for people who want to do sort of pixel arty things. Um, just, just kind of like that type of an effect. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I mean, this was long enough ago that I don't remember the meeting where we talked about this, but it's pretty likely that we said to Ike C. Gad, scary, we would have to add a new field, and that's hard, so we're not sure it's important enough to to be worth doing that. Um, I think if we can, get, and, and this is something I, I'm hoping to do anyway, but if we can get to the point where it is much easier to sort of associate arbitrary blobs of data with uh, 
some of our existing content, then uh, it would be uh, much much more plausible to to contemplate this sort of thing. Is that the only valid flag, though? Yeah, I mean that's the that's the thing. You you don't really want to just uh, if this is a special purpose. Hey, we've had a flag. We Yeah, right now you can simulate this with geometry, but that but that's a horribly inefficient solution. And of course, now that we're in AWS, that potentially opens up a, a large suite of new tech that we could consider applying for this sort of thing. Oh, sure. Hope it's useful. Texture, it should be a win. Uh, I don't, should not be uh, a loss at all. I mean, the, obviously, the more objects you're using with the sh sharing your Tentler cockroaches, the more of a win becomes. I mean, so basically, one less texture to cache, so. So yeah, it should be it would help with both uh, OpenGL and Vulkan. So yeah, I'm, I'm a huge Minecraft fan, and I'm definitely <laughs> recognize the texture atlas there. So the texture atlas, and, and even web webpages doing the same thing now too with native and HTML5. You can basically set an image to be a subsource of a, of a wider texture atlas. Just one instead of downloading like 200 small little images, you just download one big one. So much nicer. Yeah, exactly. The UI is definitely one of the common cases for that type of stuff. To get the entire UI down to one draw call is how you do that. Instead of having all these texture switches all over the place, just throw everything. I and mean, we do that for fonts already, where, where the glyphs are dynamically generated into a, into a texture. So kind of same idea. At a higher level, it's basically a compositor where you basically give it a bunch of uh, layout and textures and it would just generate a, a single texture for you.
I'll ask him about the one that's expiring. Uh, yeah, I mean, the, the updated one is, is coming along. They've been working on getting uh, push notification support. That's the that's the biggest change because it requires a new back-end service, um, but it's kind of needed to have something resembling a normal, uh, you know, mobile experience. Uh, so... But I don't think I wouldn't expect that to be done in the next six days. So if they're trying to keep anything live, they may tweak that. I'll we'll see uh, if there's any comment on that. Uh, I don't really have any update on chat. I I know that there are, you know, obviously long running issues there.
right, well, anyway, I'll, uh, I'll pass along the concerns about chat. Obviously, it's something that we're aware of. Uh, any other topics for this week? Oh, sorry about the vacation. I don't think I can help with that one, though. Roadmap. Yeah, we don't really have a long-term roadmap right now. There's a lot of discussions going on about, uh, you know, kind of larger long-term projects, and then we've got a, a few kind of, you know, shorter-term things that are working on in the meantime so the the project viewer stuff that i mentioned at the beginning is is more in the latter category but yeah once once we have something to talk about for for longer term we will um i would certainly expect that there'd be significant amounts of work going into uh you know both improving new user experience and performance but you know the, the client sales are still be decided. Mojo, uh, well, it's up to him. I'll, uh, you know ping him about and see if he's uh, able to make it at some point. All right, well, I might as well, might as well call it for this week. Uh, those of you having a long weekend, have a good long weekend, and anybody having some other form of weekend. Hope that one's good too. Um, we'll talk to you later. Thanks for everyone's feedback.